Now, having reached Kadesh Barnea on the, in the wilderness of Paran, Moses was ready to take the people into the land the Lord had promised them. That was the whole point of leaving Egypt after all. And he needed some guys to sneak into Canaan and check it out some trailblazers who would pave the way for them. That was his problem today. He needed some spies. So he picked 12 guys that looked like leaders, one from each tribe. Their names read like a list of Bible characters. Come to think of it, that's what they were. The third guy on the list from the tribe of Judah was Caleb, whose dad had the funny name of Jephunneh. Caleb was 40 at the time, heading right into the prime of life. The spies left, and the spies came back. We got good news, and we got bad news. The good news, the real estate is great, nice dairy country, Great for beekeeping, too, and producing crops that would win the blue ribbon at the county fair, hands down. Some pretty good-looking towns to boot. Now the bad news, there are some other folks there who think they own the place. They won't sell, and they're too big to fight. That's what most of the spies said, and it was deja vu all over again. Back to Egypt, if we're just going to die, we might as well have died there. Yes, that's what most of the spies said, all except two. A dude called Hosea, or Josh for short, and another called Caleb. Come on, you guys, he said, don't give up so soon. We can take that turf, go for it. But they didn't go for it. They chickened out. And that's the last we hear of Caleb for a while. Oh, oh, his name comes up three or four times. We find out that he, he'll be one of the guys that parcels out the real estate once the Israelites do get to Canaan. But mostly he keeps a low profile like somebody who knows he's ahead of his time. What a career, starting at 40. Camping over a weekend can be fun, especially you, if you have running water and a place to walk the dog. But 40 years of it with all those animals and no showers can wear you out. It wore out all the Israelites. Even Moses was about ready to say sayonara, in Hebrew of course, by the time it was over. But Caleb and Josh toughed it out. Joshua, Moses' sidekick, got to lead the Israelites into their promised land. But he was well past retirement age, ready to pack it in. He did what he could, but there was still a lot of turf to take over. Enter Caleb again. I'm just as fit as I was at 40 when I first saw this land, he told Joshua. God showed me back then that it would be mine someday. I may be 85, but I'm ready to claim it now. And claim it he did, evicting the squatters. He got the whole city of Hebron, where the Israelites' ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, were buried. He got his land, more than he needed for himself. When his married daughter asked for it, he was able to give her some land with a good water supply. Caleb was a father who really took care of his family. And he was one of the respected fathers of Israel, a man who never lost his vision for what God could do for his people. Eighty-five? So what? The golf course? Forget it. The rocking chair? Give me a break. I have a goal. I have a vision. I have God's promise. That's Caleb for you. What made Caleb tick? What was his secret? 